two locations A and B are connected by a five mile trail which features a lookout C. A group of 15 hikers started at A and walked along the trail to C. Another group of 10 hikers started at B and walked along to C. Total distance traveled to C by all hikers from the group that started in A was equal to the total distance traveled to C by all hikers the, in the group that started at B. Find the distance from A to C. We have, let's say, A is here and B is here, and then somewhere is C, and I have no idea where C is. So let's just say C is there. And we'll call this a distance X, and we'll call this distance 5 minus X, since the total distance is 5, right? So they're basically saying that the 15 people that go from uh, A to C that distance, according to what I've labeled, would be 15 times 5 minus x. And they're saying that is equal to the total distance traveled by all the hikers that um, traveled to C from B, so that started in B. So the ones that B, how many of those? 10 of those, right? So 10 times x, basically. And I think that's it. That's the equation. So here we go. So that would be 75 minus 15x is 10x. And therefore 75x, oh sorry, just 75 would be 25x. Therefore x is 3. And therefore 5 minus x would be 5 minus 3, which is 2. And what are they asking for? The distance from A to C. So from A to C is 5 minus x, and that would be 2. Alice and Bob are running around a rectangular building measuring 100 by 200. They start at the middle of the 200 meter side and run in the same direction. Alice running twice as fast as Bob. After Bob runs one lap around the building, what fraction of time were Alice and Bob on the same side of the building? Well, let's make a diagram. They're started here. So this is the 200 meter side and this is the 100 meter side. So they both start there which is the middle of the 200 meter side. Okay, so who's going faster here? Alice is running twice as fast. So Alice uh, runs, I guess, two laps. Since Bob runs one lap, so Alice runs two laps, and Bob runs one lap. Okay, so when they initially begin, they will be on the same side for a while. Uh, for a segment, like for example, Alice, when Alice reaches here, since Alice is twice as fast, Bob would reach there. Um, so that would be, let's see, the whole side is 200, right? So Alice had has gone 100 and Bob has gone 50. So, and then once Alice pa passes that corner, she will be in the, on this side, and Bob is still on that side. So they're on different sides. But at least for 50 meters, they're on the same side. And then, and then you kind of just follow that along. When Bob goes to this corner, he has traveled 100. And then because Alice runs twice as fast, she will have traveled 200. That means Alice would be here. Yeah. Now, is that the same side or not? I don't think so. I think they're really just referring to being on the side, not at the corners. And then you just kind of just keep going like that. When Bob gets to here, that same corner, he has traveled 100 plus 1 or 200, but, and Alice would have traveled 400, which would be getting to here. Yeah, so again, they're on, not on the same side. You just kind of keep going like that. And eventually what happens is Bob eventually makes it to um, here. And when he does, uh, 500, I think, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. And then when Bob gets to here, he has traveled 50 meters. And so that's going to be, let's see, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 550 for Bob. And then since Alice is uh, twice the speed, that's 1,100. And so 1,100 is what? Once around is 600, and then another 500. So Alice is 
let's see here, once around one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five. Uh, okay, I got it. Alice would have approached here, but that on her second lap. And then Bob kind of moves along till here, and then Alice is moving along the same side. Ah, I got it. So that means that this 50 meters, Alice and Bob will be on the same side. So that means only for those two 50 meter segments are they on the same side. So the, and the total that they've traveled um well the total of of the perimeter i guess is 600 so that's 100 over 600 which is 1 over 6 so i hope i hope uh i did that correctly i hope it ex i hope i explained it correctly Colleen has three shirts red green blue three skirts red green gray three scarves red blue gray and three hats green blue gray how many ways are there for her to pick a shirt, skirt, scarf, and hat so that two of the four clothes are one color and the other two are one other color? Let's uh, try to arrange this into something that would make a little bit more uh, easier for us to compare. So first let's list the clothes items and then we will fill in the colors okay so let's see here and what do we call what do we have here uh, i think we have some possibilities but we have to try to get a matching right so let's fill them in let's see what kind of colors we have so for shirts we have red green and blue. For skirts, we have red, green, and gray. And then for scars, we have red, blue, and gray. And for the hats, we have green, blue, and gray. Okay, so let's uh, let's try to figure out the scenarios, and uh, hopefully we can do this manually. Uh, I think some of you might be able to do it like more quicker uh, just say oh it's gonna be three times two times whatever but uh, I want to explain it and, and, and then later if you can go and do it quickly that's fine but I think it's better to explain it rather than just jump to this kind of system because then you may not understand it okay so the first is I'm gonna actually call this one two three four instead of having to write out the, the, the name every single time so you can have a first scenario of one and two, which is a shirt and a skirt, and both of them can be red, okay? Because they both, it's possible to make them both red. And then you can combine that uh, with a scenario where you have, let's see, what do you have? The, the next two, which is the, the scarf and the hat, they can, they have to be the same color, so let's make them blue. You got it? So that is one way of doing it. And you can quickly figure out that you can also make those first two red, but you can make the next two the same color by choosing gray. And there you go. So that's another way of doing it. And then you just kind of keep doing this. So the next one would be we're going to stick to one and two. And we're going to choose green this time. And then when it comes to three and four, we can choose blue just like before. And again, with one and two as green, we can choose three and four as gray. And there you go. That is four ways of doing it. And similarly, uh, we can now move on to other combinations. So we had one and two, but this time I'm go, going to do one and three. One and three as red combined with two and four as, let's say, green. And then one and three as red combined with two and four. Two and four with gray, I believe. Yeah, gray. I guess I have to write out the word. 
And then uh, similarly, if you have one and three, uh, we chose red, right? We can use the blue this time. And then two and four can be green. And then similarly, if we have one and three as blue, we can choose two and four as gray. And there you go, we got another four there. And then the last four, because the total is 12, the last four, uh, we're gonna choose one and four this time, and we're gonna have that as green, plus, uh, what are the other ones, two and three, as, uh, let's see, if one and four I chose as green, then two and three I can choose as red, I guess. And then similarly, if one and four are green, again, I can have two and three as two and three as gray, I believe. Yeah. And then the final two, if I choose one and four, what's the other color I can use? Uh, blue, I believe. Yeah. Blue. Then two and three can be either red or if one and four are blue, we can have two and three as gray, I believe. Yeah. So there you go. That that is complete. I completely explained all twelve. And like I said previously, you, some of you can do this much quicker by th looking at the number of combinations uh, for the initial uh, pair, and then the number of combinations for the second pair, and the number of color. Um, Possibilities. So however you want to do it, it's fine. But this was the way I wanted to do it to explain it thoroughly. Consider the sequence of consecutive even numbers starting from zero arranged in a staggered format where each row contains one more number than the previous row. The beginning of this arrangement is shown below. The number in the middle of the third row is 8. What is the number in the middle of the 101, 101st row? Well, our goal, or at least I hope, is to try to figure out some sort of a pattern because obviously there's no way you're going to write out 101 rows. So this is the first row. This is the second row, third row, fourth row, fifth row. And then eventually you're going to come down to the nth row. Well, I mean... That's what I'm hoping, that I can get some sort of a formula. And then eventually we'll get to the 101th row, and then it will have a whole bunch of entries. It'll have a middle entry, and then it'll have its final entries like that. Now, the first thing I'll do is try to figure out what is the middle entry in terms of the number. Uh, not the actual value, but like for example, if I said in the fifth row, what is the middle? You'd say, well, that's easy. It's right in front of you. Yeah, of the five numbers, it's the third number. That's what I mean. So if you have 101 numbers, it would be the 101 plus 1 divided by 2, so that would be the 51st. So this is the 51st number just in that row. That, that's important. Okay, so then uh, now I have to come up with some sort of a pattern here uh, to extrapolate. And this is what I kind of noticed at least that's what I, this is what I think will help. I looked at the row number, and then I looked at the first number, and I, say, and I said, is there any sort of type of uh, correlation? And after staring at this, I thought, eh, maybe. Let's see here. This, is, this 20 is like 5 times 4, right? I'll just write it over here. This 12 is like 4 times 3. This 6 is like 3 times 2. This 2 is like 2 times 1. Do you guys see a correlation here? I basically think that for the nth row, the first uh, number will be n times n minus 1. And you can manually make a few more rows to kind of test out this uh, theory, and you'll see that it is indeed correct. So therefore, in the 101th row, this first guy will be 101 times 100, according to my little formula. And 101 times 100 is 10100. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, well that's great, but we have to come up with this one. 
Well, each number afterwards is two more, right? Because we're just putting in uh, even numbers, if you remember correctly. Yeah, they're just even numbers. So the next one would be uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, 2. The number after that would be 1, 0, 1, 0, 4, and then so on. And if you extrapolate that, basically you're adding uh, 2 every time. So let me think about this for a second. Um, so, and just in this row, this was the first, this was the second, and this is the 51st. So each number is adding two more. So by the time you get to the 51st, you will have 50 numbers more than the first guy. And for each number, you, each uh, of those, you had to add two to the value of the first entry. So 50 times 2 is 100. So it would be... 50 times 2 plus that initial number, and therefore that would be 100 plus that, so that's 10200. 10200. And I'm pretty confident that is correct.